All right, let's bring in Stephen Farnsworth, political science professor at the University of Mary Washington. Professor, welcome as always. Both Harris and Trump are campaigning in Pennsylvania. How significant is this state? Well, oh, Pennsylvania is absolutely at the center of the Electoral College strategies of both campaigns. The challenge for uh, both of them is to win over those voters who are going to support them but might not show up uh, because of the level of frustration uh, with politics generally. So it's a key state um, in the key region, and uh, you can expect lots of visits to Pennsylvania between now and November for these two campaigns. Now, uh, the Democratic National Convention gets underway this coming week. How do you think it's going to compare to the Republican National Convention, which included, as you'll remember, celebrity appearances? And then, of course, who could forget Trump's acceptance speech, the longest in modern history? Well, I think in some ways it will be very similar. This is a chance for the true believers of the party to get together and set the stage for the campaign to come. And so the kind of unity that you saw with Republicans will be reflected as well in the kind of unity you're going to see from the Democrats in the next few days. Uh, the speech, though, is likely to be quite different. I think that one of the things that uh, Donald Trump does a lot in his public appearances is focus on grievance. The idea that the election was stolen in 2020, for example, where there is no evidence, of course, for that claim, but Trump makes it uh, pretty much constantly throughout the 2024 election. I think you're going to see a much uh, more upbeat and optimistic view about the future from the Democrats than the Republicans. I think when the Republicans talk about making America great again, that's a little bit more of a backward looking message than the uh, message that the uh, Democrats are going to want to offer. Now, yesterday, Kamala Harris unveiled her economic plan, and this was amid some criticism that she hadn't really talked a lot about policy. Uh, so what did you think about the plan? Did she deliver what Democrats were expecting? Well, certainly she said some of the things that a lot of people are going to want to hear. Uh, inflation has been a significant problem across these last four years, and uh, the idea that you can control prices uh, would be very appealing. Uh, it's not so clear that you actually can do this. I think that efforts that we've had in American history to try to work through price controls on goods and services have been somewhat limited in their success. Uh, but there are opportunities, I think, in other parts of the economic package, particularly the idea of providing expanded child care credits and creating incentives for first-time home buyers in terms of tax breaks uh, that could be a little bit more effective than the price control uh, issue that has gotten a lot of criticism today. Do you think it, there was anything in that speech that missed the mark? Well, um, as I mentioned, I think that there was an issue with respect to the price control idea. I think that's a significant problem, uh, particularly when you think about food and groceries. You know, there's, this is a very low margin business. You don't make a lot of profits running a grocery store uh, compared to running a pharmaceutical company or something or a bank. Uh, and so the reality that you could somehow figure out a way to keep prices down um, is a is a big, big challenge. And I think that's going to be one of the areas where I think critics of the uh, former um, of the new now Democratic nominee to be will be focused in the coming days. All right, Professor, that's our time. Thank you very much for your insights today. Thank you. Stephen Farnsworth, political science professor at the University of Mary Washington.